Washington, D.C. later tonight. Good evening, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Bill Raftery. We welcome you here. Miami in the Sweet 16 for only the second time ever. Marquette, Bill, in the Sweet 16 for the third straight year. It's unbelievable. The effort they put out, 50-50 ball, anything free is for me. It's a little bit like our attitude. Uh, you've got to be involved, particularly on the glass with this team. Marquette started the season 7-3, and three, losses to Butler, Florida, and Green Bay. They rebounded to uh, share the Big East title, first ever time they have done that. And in the tournament, they have gotten by Davidson and Butler by the hair of their chinny chin chin. How about players to watch? Well, the, this young man has developed into a terrific college basketball player. He will make you blue at the end of the evening. The ability of Vander to put it on the deck and get to the rim, but he's expanding his game as well. Can step out, make a three, and a middle game in. This tough performer. Jamil Wilson, he can manufacture post-ups. He can step out. He's made some big threes during this tournament. Solid play. Miami Hurricanes are enjoying quite simply the best basketball season in the history of the school. They reached number two in mid-February. They won both the ACC regular season and tournament titles. They got by Pacific in their second round game with ease. Had a bit of a struggle with Illinois, but they did prevail and they've got a pretty good point guard. Uh, the guys in the studio were kicking around. How do you stop this guy? A little kiss at the rim. He turns the corner, makes great decisions, finds people there or for the three and then the backcourt made a grizzly veteran who can knock down big shots, can play the point as well, spread and deliver the knockdown. They will be without one of their key players. Reggie Johnson, knee injury, is still in Miami. If they do get to the Final Four, they might get him back. Now let's go to our third member of the crew. Here's Rachel Nichols. Hey, guys. Well, just because Marquette's Vander Blue may be the team's leading scorer, he's not going to be afraid to mix it up and get dirty tonight. In fact, he is going to be wearing told me he plans to be extra physical tonight and the Hurricanes say that they are ready in fact coach Jim Laranega has told his players to expect quote a street fight particularly on the boards where he's warned everyone that is where you will miss Reggie Johnson the most Vern all right Rachel thank you we eagerly await the tip and we'll have it right after this In his fifth season as the head coach of the Marquette Golden Eagles, Buzz Williams. And his starting lineups, Trent Lockett, Vander Blue, Junior Cadogan, Juan Anderson, and Chris O'Toole. For the Miami Hurricanes, Trey McKinney-Jones, Durand Scott, Shane Larkin, Kenny Kaji, Julian Gamble, and the head coach in his second season at Miami, Jim Laranega. The officiating crew, Mark Whitehead, Gregory Nixon, and Dwayne Gladden. And we are underway, fifth meeting ever between these two. They had uh, home and home series for four years back in the 80s, and they split those games two and two. Kaji and Otule will toss it up. Vander Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Later on being on the court. Well, he had to get that fest straight down. Yes, he did. Taken by Marquette. Juan Anderson. He gives it off to Junior Cadogan, the point guard. Number five picked up by Larkin. And Vern Lundquist. Miami go. There will be a lot of motion at the end of run out ball screen. Otuli and later Gardner. Look Back at the, to the top of the key. Entry pass, a good one. That's, he is tough in there. The kid has great shape-up ability. Otule. Back outside. Marquette still controls. Yeah. Gadugan has it. They're pretty good on the offensive glass, as you will see. Larkin guarding Gadugan, and the ball comes down in the hands of Julian Gamble. And right now, this is the whole game, how they handle the ball screen. Early on, they like to go inside, but eventually... It's that high five outside, just like this. Turn and make a decision. Jumper for three. Nope. He's Rebound Otula. He's the pick and pop guy. Kaji. 
Larkin goes around behind. He's got the freedom to do that, to try and make the steal. And how about the block? Woo, pretty high level. Some good decisions, but empty trips. Trey McKinney-Jones with a rebound, and here is Shane Larkin again, picked up by Kadugan. Nice That's screen. beautiful. Beautiful. And a great back screen. Got Kaji right to the tin. Into the corner, Kadugan. Return pass. Jumper lock it, and he gets it. He's not been shooting that well. That's a key for Marquette. Trey Lockett, who played uh, three years at Arizona State, is a graduate and exercised that MCAA allowance to pursue a graduate degree in a discipline that is not offered at Arizona State. And there's that ball screen, too, where uh, Luck is one of those guys. They let him play through it because he has such great work habits, such a great competitor. Vanderblue, jumper. Nope. Rebound Miami. And again, it's Trey McKinney-Jones with the board. How do you handle it? Illinois walled it a little bit. They're going to run everything they can in a ball screen. And anytime you get motion up front, off the dribble, well, he could do some things, can he? Kenny Kaji, who spent two years at Florida, transferred, sat out a year, now a senior. Back outside for Marquette. Vanderblue goes baseline up and under short. Rebound grabbed by the Golden Eagles and saved by Vanderblue. Juan Anderson puts Pretty. it on the deck. Wow, nice look, nice conversion as well. Boy, they're getting, they love to get into the three-second area, either with a pass or a dribble. And the more they do it, the more effective they are. They're not known as a deep shooting team, so you've got to really contain your guy off the bounce. You're being very kind, I think, when well, you say they're not a deep shooting team. Well, it sounds like I'm related to them, huh? <laughs> 30% from three for the year as a team. They don't have a single player, Marquette, who's hitting more than 40% for the year. Underneath, loose ball. Here come the Golden Eagles. We're tied at four. Blue. Baseline driver is uh, left-handed layup. Won the first game. That one short by Anderson. Chased down and saved by Kenny Kaji. Always waiting for the ball. They're going to run a double now. One rolls to the rim. The other pops. Kaji's the popper, right? Now Larkin back outside. Only a sophomore. Now look at the help. Well, there's the wall and the recovery. Uh, for good, three. Good pass. Nope. Tipped into the hands of Vander Blue. Loose ball stolen. Picked up by Miami. Over and back. Uh, the ability to get free in the half court. They love to go inside early. Back screen and the ability to finish at the rim. Send it in, big fella. Kenny on the money. Well, this is the first time three schools from the state of Florida have ever made the Sweet 16 in the second straight tournament without an overtime game in the first through the third rounds. And we have been informed that Florida Gulf Coast University prefers to be identified by its letters, F-G-C-U. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to pronounce as an acronym. And, and I think stopping the penetration for Jim Laranega has been a difficult task. They have not finished at the rim, Marquette, but they've had ample opportunities. Gardner in for O'Toole. And Jamil Wilson is also on the floor. Off the bench, they play more minutes than, minutes than a couple of the starters. This is Devontae Gardner. He has a large frame. Well, you're being kind. <laughs> he loads up as well. Really terrific understanding of where to go with the ball. There's the double as nice Gardner shot. goes up. And we'll have a free throw forthcoming. These two broke girls have no money, no mercy, and no shame. Monday at 9, 8 Central only. CBS. And you were mentioning Luck had struggling with his shooting, but he knows the game. Always gets himself available in good position. And that bailout pass by the big fella on the money. That was on Gamble. Now Larinaga is going to go to his bench and send three fresh bodies on. And Derek Wilson comes on for Buzz Wilson's Williams uh, Marquette team. 
Lockett shoots one more. Ryan Brown in. Akpajuri, who's very active on the glass, very helpful now, particularly at the big guy, Reggie Johnson. Successful trip for Lockett. So here's Larkin. A little bit of pressure applied by Derek Wilson, the sophomore. Well, it makes this kid tough. He handles and can go both ways. Solid head up. Duran Scott. Nice anticipation. Nice steal. Vander Blue. Blue on blue. Boy, is that scouting. The preparation, the read, just shortcutting. Excellent maneuver defensively. Six unanswered for Marquette. So they compete. You got to meet this competition. Nice trap. They read sideline, anticipate beautifully. Here's Larkin. Switch. Got to get it out of there. Duran Scott drives it. Nice and it's blocked. And off of him. Uh, just a terrific read. Stepping into passing lane. Uh, talk about this kid's improvement. It's utterly amazing what he's been able to do. Always could drive it, finish. Now he's got a game. Terrific face-up shooter. Oh. Athletic at the 10. Woo. Wilson Kadugan. Gardner. Vander Blue. And Jamil Wilson. That's off the head. And right in the right spot again. Look it. Front rim. Right into the hands of Kaduga. Anything for free, these kids. Here's Gardner, number 54. What did you count? Marquette had 68 substitutions yeah. in a recent game. Iron Eagle is one of our guys. I think they lost count with minutes to go at 68. So yeah, they just get their hands on everything. Very active in position. That one tough uh, tip last by Miami after a conversation with two of the officials. 8-4, Marquette has scored the last six. Cadogan will be guarded by Larkin. But not very closely. It's a pretty good strength, too, out there. Particularly with Gardner keeping him in abeyance. Wilson, no. Here comes Larkin. Keeping him out of the lane is key. He can make those. Not that one. Rebound. Up and under. No. Saved by Marquette. Gardner gets to the rim and then begs beautifully. They got him. Devontae Gardner. Double comes. Almost. He goes baseline. How about that? Oh, oh my. my. A little drop step by the big fella. That derriere comes in handy. Right around the rim. He just controls. Great feel for the opponent. Margin is six for Marquette. You should have such quick feet, by the way. <laughs> he is amazing for that size. Like a great offensive lineman when you think of it. Ooh, off the bounce, you like to see that. When they step in off of penetration, they're much more effective. Ryan Brown, one of those deep shooters that Miami has. Vander Blue on the dribble, takes it, puts it off the glass, Woo! and cans it. Wow, tough, tough. Force guys hit the shots like that. A little help from above and a kiss. Ten unanswered. Vander Blue telling us yesterday that he spent the summer watching DVDs of Russell Westbrook and Dwayne Wade. Well, you could learn from that. Yeah, I think so. You get, you get in trouble the ones you watch. Now, don't do <laughs> Nice pass. And very available, too. Akwajori. Whoops. Wild shot. Yeah, you see where they miss Reggie Johnson. Don't have the option. Curry, not the kind of a guy that can do. Not a good foul here. Nope. Boy, they're off their game right now. Jim Lyron, they get a little upset. Doesn't understand them. But Devante, the Palais, the Pirouette, the soft. Delivery. He is a load to control. Put that on you. You're in trouble.
Welcome back to Washington, D.C., where Marquette leads Miami 12 to 8. And as Marquette coach Buzz Williams was just talking to his team during this timeout, he shouted the usual X's and O's, but he also just yelled a color at them. Buzz Williams, in fact, has seven different colors. He's even got a fuchsia, and each one represents a different defense he wants on ball screens. During each timeout, he's going to rotate colors and defenses on ball screens. And his theory, guys, is that good players will get used to anything. So you have to change it up on him on them constantly. Look for that throughout the game. And we will, Rachel. Thank you. Missed free throw by Kadugan. He's amazing. What if you're colorblind? You probably can't play for it, right? <laughs> uh, Rachel's right on top of it. That's true. He's going to do anything he can to keep Larkin in abeyance. Don't let him turn the corner or it's a wall, a trap, an ice. All of those colors signify one of those defensive maneuvers. Well, between Buzz Williams and Jim Laranega, as many as any two coaches you'll find coaching against each other, they are statistically oriented. Mm -hmm. They just love... Whoa, that's off of... A tough shot. The foot. Yep. A little, little, little nickel dimer. Another one on Larkin. That's the second one. Ooh. They need him on the floor. What you're saying is you don't want to be around them at 11 o'clock at night. You're exactly. the stats, right? I'd rather be around you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they work for these guys. That, you know, Jim Laranega talked to his kids about where they were on turnovers and how they valued the ball. And, their defensive field goal numbers and uh, said, hey, you think we're better than we are. And that's how they developed a scheme for these kids. They bought in and what a job. A lot of people didn't think it could be done at Miami. He certainly has done it. Larkin takes a seat for his second foul. Steve Taylor Jr. is on the floor now, number 25 for Marquette. Yeah, he's very active on the glass. Look at Gardner trying to establish that low post presence. Tough to keep him out. They got the steps. Traveling. A little case of nerves, I think. You think? Yeah. Okay. Steve Taylor Jr. Uh, putting on the early on some of the shot selection, particularly by Blue. Not customary. Now Durant Scott, who is more naturally a point guard than he is the off guard, moves into that spot with Larkin on the bench for the second foul. Durant Scott out of the Bronx, Rice High School, which is now closed from the corner. McKinney Jones and foul is called. Now we talked about their ability to defend anything. They challenge every shot. They stick people on rebounds, get runouts because of their defense. And of course, sensational in the open floor with that type of delivery. But always alert, always aware. Great weak side analysis. Always sniffing when the ball's opposite. And here is Jul Julius, I um, beg your pardon, Julian Gamble at the line. Struggles a little bit from the line. Low post kind of a guy. Likes to come over the right shoulder with his left hook. And Jim Laranega is going to put his All-American point guard back on the floor. Shane Larkin. Let him play with the two fouls. Risky? Well, it is. And if I'm Marquette now, I wouldn't just isolate him. But if I got the chance, I'm going to dribble drive and see if you can get around him. Number three, they're an entirely different team if Larkin's not dominating. Screen set by Gardner. Well, give it to him. He's got it. Look at the footwork by the big guy. Nice hands. Gamble yeah, in the right spot. Julian, terrific defender. Getting his masters. This is an old team. We might be able to play for Miami, you know. The average age is 23. Yeah. Uh, they weren't in the Normandy invasion, but uh, they've been around some of these kids. Yes, they have. Don Ryan Brown is back on now, number 15. And, and some of the reasons are injury. Well, red Gamble, shirt. for example, mm -hmm. had a couple of years uh, medical red shirt. Didn't play one year. Mm -hmm. A senior out of Durham, North Carolina. He's number 45. Kaji is a transfer from Florida, as we mentioned. He sets the screen now for Larkin. You see the rotation, but you're going to gamble. You leave the open. you got to make those. They're giving you the opportunity. Now with a real clean look. Look at this kid get to the rim. Van der Roy. Wow. Oof. Adam Madison, what a coup when they got him. He's got six. Marquette has 14. 
Miami only five. Here comes the run out. Let's to run that fade. Look at the trap. String it out. Nice play. And the occupying underneath. Really a nice play by Gamble to hold off a little bit. And Kenny Kaji takes it to the rim and puts it in. He's got six points. You've got to make him pay for that trap. When they double one, search and find. Wilson. Yes! Oh, boy. He's making some big jumpers. Davidson game able to step up. Expanding his game. Very talented guy. It's around five rebounds a game. Guards. Same play. Larkin, jumper. That's yeah, for three. Uh, he does a great job crossing over. He refuses ball screens. He splits them. Turns the corner and explodes. That's more like him. Here's Vander Blue again. This one. Oh, yes. Wow. What did you say? He hadn't played well lately. <laughs> I get to the 10 with alacrity. That looks like a guy with a graduate degree. Well, nobody put a body on him. Lock it, a flyer for the dunk. And it's 19-10, Marquette. They're poised right now. You need these combo guards to make good decisions and the wings to make shots. Jumper Kaji. I saw him make eight in a row yesterday at practice. He, he, he can hit that three-pointer. He yes. sure can. He's a dangerous guy. Wilson. Right up. Did we say something about they can't hit from beyond the arc? I don't know who gave us that advice. Uh, they're playing well. They're on a roll. A lot of confidence in this team right now. It stems from their defense, their activity around the glass. Great read, and wow, the elevation. The hammer. Marquette with a 12-point edge, and they have the statistical lead in every category on the board. Field goals, three-point field goals, and rebounds. And they have, as the pace of the game, what they want very conducive to their game. They're very aggressive. They really get after you. They're going to extend the floor. They, when they sort of sense that they're in better shape or their activity is more involved, you know, they just step it up. They just keep coming at you. And energy is a big thing for Miami. Now, you've got to match it. Well, a bit of pressure applied by Marquette. Larkin inbounds it to Tonye Jakiri, who is uh, off the bench. And a reminder that over on PBS, Arizona and Ohio State getting in the way. Yep. Yes, nice press screen. That's one of their favorite plays. Marquette's usually very astute at sniffing those things out. That was pretty basketball. Tough to get weak side help, too. Ryan Brown at the end of the alley-oop pass. 7-19 to go first half. And a 10-point deficit for the second-seeded Hurricanes from Miami. Oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy. What a job. Oh, Tule just loaded up in that lane. They just big beautifully. Tule is another one of those who has career has been really hampered by injuries. He's only played one full season until this year. Missed uh, all or parts of three others. Nice job on their rotation that time, Marquette. Larkin looks inside. Teller doing a great job. Three-quarter, the nine. Eight, and eight. Five on the shot clock. Kaji passes on the three. The drive and the dish. And then... A shot clock violation mm. as Tonye Jakiri missed it from point blank range. Now, Buzz is alert, shows his team. They are really doing a heck of a job at the brush screen at the foul line. One of the few breakdowns by Marquette. Pretty look and a terrific finish. Twenty-four twelve, Marquette. It's called March Madness. There's some guys who can crash it. Wichita State, ousted Gonzaga, your alma mater, mm -hmm. LaSalle, first regional final since Tom Gola played, and FGCU, the first 15 seed to advance to the Sweet 16. First 55, Bill Russell 
beat LaSalle in the final. They won the year before. Once again, going inside, not a good release here. No. Nope. We're too late. This team has to show their poise now. You know, ACC regular season, the tournament champs. And they've been through the mill. And they have conquered some pretty good teams. They're the only team since the ACC started to defeat both Duke and North Carolina by 25 or more points in the same season. Nice entry. They've been a little baseline rubs. Nice kick. Now he's got to hit it, as you said, yeah, and he they, does not. Well, that's big for them. Their wing guys have to drill that jumper around that time. Ryan Brown, who had 21 in the last game in the tournament. Another miss. They're 5 of 19 from the field now. Is Miami. Jumper? No. Yes. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was bouncing around, but that's what they have to do. Be aggressive. you got to go after this team. Match their energy. Spin. Duran Scott. And he's fouled. Well, let me put my golf voice on uh, here. Let me hear okay. it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Masters Live streams exclusive video of Amen Corner 15 and 16 and featured group. For more, go to cbssports.com slash masters and masters.com. You, you have a very good. Uh, you've done that before. You have a beautiful spot down there on 16. It's not a bad place no. to spend a week. No, exciting. Free throw is good for Duran Scott. Ryan Brown is going to lead. So is Jakiri. Twenty-four, thirteen. Got kind of chunk off the back rim, but it does go through. Larkin still on with two fouls. 5.15 to go in the first half. It has been dominated by this Marquette team. Now, this is their, their tough defensive team. They just got to crank it up a little bit. Larkin's got to be careful, though. Yes. He's on Kadugan. Lock it. Now, this is a good defensive set right now. Tough shot. Off the glass, Larkin is there to grab it. A great check out on Luckett, too. From the corner, Ryan Brown still can't get it to fall. He hit 5 of 10 from three-point range in the win over Illinois. Nothing fallen for him today. Now, this is where you reach back at this end to make up for it, though. Be solid. Luckett, one of those guys that will back you down and power a little too deep. And Wilson. Nope. Here comes Duran Scott, picked up by Kadugan. Scott all the way off balance. The ball is tipped. He goes up, misses again. Bring it out. How about that? And he misses again. Should have kicked it out. Too many bigs. Blue. We near the four-minute mark. Yeah, jump out. Well, not a good one. Body activity here. We mentioned a weak side pressure exhibited by Marquette. They have a great feel and understanding. Get there, help the partner. A lot of trust in his defensive scheme. Five of 24 from the field for the Hurricanes. Mm. I'd be tempted to get Larkin out, by the way. As soon as you can. Mm -hmm. Only 10 down. Too valuable. Oh, he almost had the block. Yep. Luck. I think that they're amazing how they come up with that. Kadugan. The other way. Offense. 331 to go. 24 14. Thank you, Greg. Wichita State LaSalle in the second game on TBS and the winners advance to Saturday's regional final in Los Angeles. Last time we saw Wichita State, Bill, or in the tournament, was here yes, seven right. years ago when uh, George Mason, under head coach Jim Laranaga, knocked them off. And then in the regional final, one of the great upsets in tournament history, 
as George Mason knocked off the top seed at UConn and went to the Final Four. Uh, that little shot of Jimmy, of course, Lamar Butler was here yesterday, Tony Skin, two of the kids from that team. What a weekend in Washington for that guy and his team. Sensational. Here's Larkin on the floor with two fouls. He picked them up early. And uh, Larinaga rolling the dice. His team 5 of 24 from the field. Duran Scott is 0 for 5. Here's Larkin. A little more hesitant to turn the corner. Kaji for 3. Wow. Man. And it won't go there. 1 of 11 from 3-point range now. Look at that. 2 dark shirts right after the basketball. It was up for grabs. That's their game. Under three, Vander Blue. Larkin's got to be careful, even if it means a basket. Baseline drive, no. Rebound, yes. Oh. Put back, good. Otule in the right spot, and they carve such area to two bigs. Gardner, another guy, legally just present themselves. Get to that rim. How do you account for the for the poor shooting? Is it uh, yeah, I, nerves? You know, it might be. I mean, they're not themselves. No, quite all the tape I watched, uh, the Carolina game in the finals of ECC. This is a poised team, just a little bit rattled, but you know, only 12 despite a real good start. Wow, that, that another that miss. Tough, step back and uh, a missed rebound opportunity for Kaji. Uh, Kenny Jones is a pretty darn good three-point shooter, squared up. They're making him put it on the deck. In the hands of Derek Wilson, the sophomore, number 12. 150 to go in the first half. Nice find underneath. Lock it. No. Good defensive play. Durand. Wow. How did he get there? Missed it again. He's 0 for 6. Back to McKinney Jones. See how they run him off the spot? They are yeah. not going to let him get organized. He's stepping in for that tray. McKinney Jones, who's from Milwaukee and ironically was offered a track scholarship by Marquette. He went to uh, UKMC for two years, sat out a year and transferred down to Miami. Finally, a basket. It's a 10-point margin. These refs have really done a nice job, I think. You know, a play on there. Just solid quick timeout by Buzz. And he well, stayed on the sideline. This, <laughs> despite the difficulties in scoring, they're only down 10. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Greg, Greg, Doug, Kenny, and Charles will take you out for a live look at Arizona versus Ohio State on TBS, plus the latest NCAA tournament news. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. You know, I mentioned the uh, the foul situation. What confidence and what poise by Shane not to get involved in any situation where he's going to get three. Uh, Larkin has played, I don't know, almost 15 minutes of this half with two fouls. Mm -hmm. Testament to his knowledge of the game, you know, staying out of traffic, staying away from tough situations. That's his play. He loves that little turnaround step back. And the foul is called on Trey McKinney Jones. Tuesday on CBS, LL Cool J and Chris O'Donnell star in the hit drama NCIS Los Angeles. That's Tuesday at 9, 8 Central, only CBS. Shakiri and Akpajuri, they're, they're guys that I guess they're going to have to give them something. Well, at the line, these uh, Marquette Golden Eagles, he misses the first, are wearing two patches this year. One of them in commemoration of Al McGuire, who died in 2001, and the other, R.M., Rick Majerus, their longtime coach, who passed away in December, and whose funeral service, memorial service, was held on campus at Marquette. Both guys, good friends of mine. I went to speak at Al's banquet, and uh, Rick picked me up the first time I met him in 76. I called my wife two days later, said, I don't know where I am. I've been kidnapped. I had such a good time with, <laughs> with the two of them. Oh, dear. <laughs> nice kick, and that's their game. Jumper. Wow. Nope. I get it. Can't get it. Force him to put it on the deck. They're running him off the line. Heady play. Great preparation. 11-point margin for Marquette. Final 23 seconds of the first half. And they will play 
for the last shot. Late run out. Most clubs have that. You've got to contain or help. And then stay at home on the corner shooters. And, of course, the rebound, too, with a guy like Gardner. Tough shot. Fade away. Ooh. Got it. Wow. That's the difference in his game. He now has a mid-range and can step out as well. as a tactic hit. Not bad, huh, Vern? And worth another look. A lot of hard work to get this down. Said he spent all summer developing that game. And Buzz, a little body English. It is the lowest scoring first half of the year for Miami. Let's go to Rachel Nichols. Well, here with Buzz Williams. And uh, you told me you'd be sweating through this game, and you certainly are. But you got to like the way your team is playing. We're just trying to hold on. Miami is really, really good. Really good. And uh, are they missing so many shots because of the way you guys are defending them? What are you doing out there to make them? I don't know. They're really good players. They'll make them in the second half. We did a good job contesting shots. I thought our rotation was really good. They had six offensive rebounds there in a three or four minute stretch. We've got to get every 50-50 ball. Excellent. We'll get you a towel at halftime. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. <laughs> That's the end of the first half with the score. Marquette 29, Miami 16. We'll send you to AT&T at the half after this message and this word from your local station. Somewhat amazingly, Marquette 29 to 16. I say amazing, Bill, only because this Miami team has been a good shooting team until tonight. They are struggling. I think it's a case of nerves, quite frankly. Uh, they're not pacing themselves properly. They're not screening well. Right. Not reacting to loose balls. And uh, defensively, Marquette is a great part of the reason. The ability to shoot the gap. Here, the anticipation. Great rotation in the back. Play the center spot, then play the forward. Rotate down. But how about this elevation at the end? He has been solid. 11-1. We might do that early in the morning, not late at night, but pretty impressive. And how about his ability to convert around the rim, and he had that pull-up jumper. He's expanded his game. Solid performer. And let's take a look at the first half stats presented by Coke Zero. 12 of 27 versus 6 of 9. 1 of 11. They've been out-rebounded, and they have been outscored in the paint. That is one of the stats that Buzz Williams pays so much uh, attention to. Let's go to Rachel Nichols. Well, Coach, you guys shooting 21%, <laughs> 1 for 11 behind the three-point line. What do you got to do to get those shots to fall in the second half? Yeah, we just didn't play very well at either end of the floor. Uh, I, our guys got discouraged when their shots didn't fall. We just got to play much harder, much smarter, and better together. We got to start executing the things we planned on doing. We haven't done that all game. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. Larkin's uh, attempt at three means that Miami is now one for 12 from beyond the arc. It's Cadogan, Blue, Otule, and Lockett. Along with Juan Anderson, this is the starting five on the floor for Marquette. Now, this is the end that Jim Laranega knows can set the tempo. Uptick a little bit, be aggressive, and match that ability to come up with loose stuff by Marquette. Entry pass. Up. Too low yes, it was guy. down near the knees. And Otule misses. But another rebound. And a foul. For a closer look at this Miami team, a bunch that is tight on the court and loose off of it, get team stream from Bleacher Report. Well, they're tight on the court tonight, this Miami team. Otule goes to the line. This 13-point deficit at the half equals the largest deficit Miami has faced this season that was at Wake Forest and they lost 80 to 65 that ended a 14 game winning streak for the Hurricanes and the big fellow making free throws here too impressive you mentioned how you've been Nick tough throughout his career but a forceful guy sets the tone physically I think and then the six man of the year Devontae Gardner comes in and then they choose down the chase down the loose ball that one's on the line Kadugan had his foot across the line yeah this is where you Buzz Williams says are you sure <laughs> Buzz does a little bit of officiating he's been good though he hasn't been out near half court no. oh my gosh how can you call that <laughs> Bamoni the fact Gamble has yet to score a nice defense here 
Larkin has only two. Nice screen. Larkin put back no good. Gamble fights for it, and a foul is called on Otule. Yeah, that's a different personality right now. Aggressive attack at a rim, and then the follow. Well, he wears it all out there, doesn't he? Well, he's from Van Alstine, Texas, about uh, 48 miles north of Dallas. And he enrolled in Navarro Community College in Corsicana about 60 miles south of Dallas. A little 2-3 zone right now. Foul line, a little flash. Keys to rebound. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Got away with it. Yes, he did. <laughs> he loves to come over that left shoulder now. Back outside. Nice one touch by Larkin. Big. Finally. Big. Finally. And he can drill him. You mentioned the consistency yesterday at the shoot-around. Kaji, one of those talented pick-and-pop guys. Here's Vander Blue. Not bad. Around huh? the rim and in. Uh, once you cave the defense, heads turn, spin, just make yourself available, big fella. Kadugan picks up Larkin. Larkin with two fouls. Kaji with that free throw. That's only uh, the three-pointer. Only the second made today. Boy, they strung him out with two guys. A little small change by Anderson. Only three team fouls in the first half for Marquette. That's two in this second half. Well, they play aggressively. There's no question about it. Not a bad sub here when you think of it. Huh? Well, Jamil Wilson, this is not an unusual sub at all because he gets more minutes than does Juan Anderson. So, Wilson, number zero off the bench. Here's Gamble. Duran Scott yet to score. Still yet to score. A tough shot, too, going away from your dominant hand and trying to balance yourself and deliver. Score normally for Scott is 13 per game. He's 0 for 7 in this one. Yeah, nice match here for Wilson. He can elevate over. And he uses all of the rim, but it falls through, and it's a 15-point deficit. Yeah, a little mismatch on that particular trip and a great read by Marquette. Yeah, they just string it out and then recover. Larkin normally is able to penetrate. Unable. Wow. 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 This kid knows how to play. They mix up the three with the ability to put it on the deck and get to the rim. They look different right now, man. They're a little hungrier. Mm-hmm. Maybe some suggestions at halftime. Boy, strongly. Nice series of pins. Kadugan. Yes. Yeah, nice lock, boy. You, you've got a lock and ride him. You just can't. Kadugan's got a nice little middle game. Back to a 15-point margin. Nice oh, play. Oh, goodness. Nice play defensively. That far out, you can go under Vern on Larkin. He's not going to jack one on that deep, but the inability to convert has been the detriment of Miami. They're just unable to get open looks, and when they do get them, not converting, even around the rim, uh, some activity, and they need more persistence, I think, get into the game. Traveled, and that's a nice job there. Scott, real aggressive with Buzz voicing his displeasure. He must lose about five pounds a game, don't you think? Well, and he loses half the strength in his voice. He starts out slightly hoarse. Are you suggesting that should happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> Never. No, he, he, ever. he does emote, no question about it. Never played the game, always a, a student of the game. One of the few times he's been able to explode. He can go either way. Very tough at the rim, too. Those are nice little handle by Dark Wilson. Yes. Up and under. Yes. Lock it. Boy, it's, you're doing well when you get a bailout on a cut. That's just lock it doing the right thing. Lockett has eight. 
for the season he averages only seven look at this preparation big showing recovering guards unable to get they're going to do more screening than using the ball screen i get away from it kaji tip by gamble no jameer wilson with a rebound marquette no numbers here Derek Wilson pretty, into the lane. Pretty solid. Makes pretty good decisions. Doesn't turn it over. Made a couple of How about this kid? Wow. What a presence he has been come tournament time. I forget. Was it you or was it me who said they can't shoot from beyond the arc? I think it was both of us. Well, I'll go down yeah. with you. Jamil Wilson can drill it, though. Wow. Woo. Able to convert big time. Images of tonight's game are brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. That was just at the end of the half. Vander Blue and Jameer Wilson have helped lead the way offensively for Marquette. Check this out. Over the course of the season, Miami has given up only 39%, 39.6% from the field per game. Tonight, Marquette is hitting 51.5%. Yeah, they've been efficient, cutting well, making good decisions. And right now, fight your way back in. Not a bad move here. Look at the help and the great cut. And Larkin is fouled. Shane Larkin with a terrific dive to the rim. 14.31 to go. This is the under-16 media timeout. All right, Greg, as you can see from the scoreboard high above the court here, they haven't updated the score. They've got 36-31. That just proves the value of having Greg Gumbel in the studio. We know what's going on. It's a great time of year to hear that voice. Shane Larkin at the line. Been a tough night for him. All the Miami fans, they're trailing 41-23. He is shooting two. Because he has to step up. But when you think about Brown, Jones, and Scott really struggling. You know, one for 17. That's tough. Well, it's a long night for his parents, too. On the left, his mom, Lisa. On the right, Hall of Famer Barry Larkin. 19-year career with the Reds. Went into the Hall of Fame in 2012. Said one of the toughest times of his life was when his son Shane, at the age of seven, said, Dad, I don't want to play baseball. <laughs> uh, it turned out pretty good for him, though. Yeah. But what was the story? I guess, wasn't it Tony Perez taught him the leg kick? Yeah. And the little league coach didn't like it. Right. Yes. And he said, I don't know who's teaching you how to, uh, how to hit, but he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> and Shane said, I think that's how I'm going to play basketball. Oh, look at this nice rotation. Look at the steal. Got oh, it. That's yes. what they need. A little juice. But right now, not being available has hurt Marquette. A lot of numbers down here. Cadogan. It's contagious sometimes. Lock it. Got to get it over. He does into Lockett's hands into the corner. Devontae Gardner, nice find, but good defense by Duran Scott, who just got his first field goal of the night. Now, he's a talented kid. They just really didn't come out relaxed, didn't find a comfort zone. A little back cut in the one four set. Double ball screen. Nice. Long. Beautiful. And the big fella didn't even have to lock his guy. Wilson has just been so good. Efficient, rebounding, making plays. Whew. Larkin. There was Wilson ready to take the charge. And this is going to step in where they're much better. That's their game. Drive, draw, and kick. And Jones, one of those guys, when he's organized, can deliver big time. Well, in the ACC championship game in the tournament, he had six threes. That's his first tonight. But at the other end, Kadugan. What a pretty good read. He knew he had size, but Larkin being the only one to deter back there. Margin is 15. Marquette and Miami. 
Sweet 16. The winner gets either Indiana or Syracuse here on Saturday afternoon. A good recovery here on the, the guy who can step out and shoot it. Kaji with a slip, and they got him. Ryan Brown back to Kaji. There's Gardner, defensive presence. Wow, he got away with the little yes. belly bump. Woo. They call that in the Tavern League. <laughs> Not that I would know anything about it. No, him. of course you wouldn't. 45 30. Well, they have really been active on both ends of the floor, Marquette. Ball screen, big guy gets to the rim. He's got inside position. They are solid. And once again, boom, with the ability to convert, stepping up his game. Vanderblue has been the Marquette hero in the first two games, which they won by a total of three points. And uh, those were over Davidson and Butler, and they have manhandled Miami so far tonight. Did you see Gardner's foot speed to cover the little guy? And he comes over to help then. Unbelievable. Now, he's struggling as he tries to get there. I got to tell you, but that was not the sprint that we... <laughs> well, you know, you can't call a cab in the middle of the game. <laughs> He's, he wants out. He's asking for how Buzz yeah. just looked the other way. Yes. He was looking over at Buzz and saying, help. Now he's got it. That was a tired delivery, too. It sure was. He's going to Wilt Trot now, too. He wasn't going to get back down. <laughs> Devontae Gardner just said, oh, my gosh, timeout. <laughs> I'm not suggesting this would be hard for you, but when you've got a little extra cargo on you, <laughs> you have to show big. And this is effort. Watch him string this out. It's almost a three-man. And then he rotates back, gets involved on the defensive end at the end of this particular play. Just solid contribution. He was exhausted. It's a little bit of a blow. And Uchule on the floor for him. What a terrific effort by the big guy. There's the entry pass, so Tule has a perfect position. He really does. I mean, he's one of the best, I think, in the country at locking his guy and holding on and begging big time. And so the margin is 19 with 10.55 to go. Marquette in the Sweet 16 for the third consecutive year. They lost to Florida in this round last year to North Carolina in 2011. Now, this is the shot, uh, tough delivery, but that's what they do. Larkin gets in, creates havoc, gets a paint touch, and kicks. Tough shot, tough shot. Off the uh, side rim. And Wilson right out. Attention to detail, this Marquette team. Nice cross. And the blue, there's the switch. Gambles out on him. Now Larkin picks him up. Kadugan says, uh, let me have it. And they don't have to be in a hurry either. To get something good early, fine. Blue. Pretty good. Water good. Boy. His handle, efficient, decision making extraordinary. And once again, getting into the three second lane easily. Marquette is 10 of 12 from the field in this half. Four of those have been layups. Larkin off the glass and good. That's Duran Scotty then goes for the steal, but Kadugan has it. Kadugan, Jameer Wilson, Vanderblue, Otule, and Trent Lockett on the floor for the Golden Eagles of Marquette. That's a sample of what Larkin can do if he's permitted to get in that lane. Blue, double team. Nope. Tip from Lockett doesn't go. Three on three. Here's Grant Scott. And Ned. Gamble. And he'll shoot one. And that's what they have to do. Be more aggressive. Get yourself down the floor. The NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues this Saturday on ESPN with regional semifinal action as Delaware battles Kentucky. Coverage begins at noon Eastern. For more information on the Women's Championship, go to NCAA.com.
You know, looking at Buzz over there yesterday, he told both of us, the guys know who's coming in for them. They sometimes sub for themselves, knowing their back court mate, in this case, Wilson comes in, give Kadugan a blow. Interesting philosophy, but it works. Gamble with the free throw. He gets great support from the bench. Guys are always ready to play and contribute. Little run and jump. There's Devontae Gardner. Under nine to go. And Marquette by 16. They had a 10-0 run in the first half. They were up by 13. There's a turnover. Not a good look, but look at the hustle back. Whoa, what a play. How about that? Uh, the experience running the floor the big guy oh that is great by gamble well how about trey mckinney jones getting down there we said he was a sprinter in high school timeout called marquette watch this play mm. a triple jump guy but the ability of the big to get down the floor gamble delivering rolling the dice Miami has cut the margin to 14. Don't miss out on NCAA tournament gear, including Sweet 16 shirts at the official store of the NCAA. Get your gear now at NCAA.com slash shop. They're starting to believe right now. Tui Laranagan, that last time out watching him, uh, just exhorting them to get a little tougher on this end get some run out get some easy goals and within hailing distance now a few more stops they're right in it i love that whistle too by the way <laughs> yep jimmy laranaga fifth leading scorer in providence oh, history. There's, there's another one half court trap yes i'm sorry that's all right his history a pretty good one well in 14 years here at george mason when he applied for the Miami job, they thought Frank Martin was going to get it for mm -hmm. Kansas State. To, and it turned out that the, he wasn't the choice. Jim was visiting his son, Jay, in Erie, Pennsylvania, when he got a call from a friend who said, you need to apply. Send your resume. He says, I don't have one. Two more? No. Yes. No. I'm sorry. That was big by Gamble. And they get the small, oops, the small change foul. Time is called. This is the under eight media time. Marquette by 14, and they have the edge in every other category statistically. 51 37. Jim Laranega, just to wrap that story up, was the coach at George Mason, and he decided to apply for the job at Miami, but he was visiting his son. They said, Send a resume. He said, I don't have one available. So they faxed his Wikipedia page. And that served as his application to Miami. <laughs> I think they knew about him. Don't you? You get that feeling? Oh, yeah. What a great job. Chris. he lost his old pal, his high school coach, Jack Curran. He mentioned it's sad about Jack and his his coach, Dave Gavin. Right. Those are the two guys that had such an impact on his life. ACC Coach of the Year. What a job. And they are starting to pick it up a little bit. It always starts on this end. They can cough it up. Another, another run and jump situation. You will pay for it if you don't recover. Nice job. Blocked by Gamble. Here comes Miami. They've scored the last seven. And it's taken by Gardner. It's interesting. Once in a while, he doesn't even have to jump. Vander Blue, three, three on this. one. Wow. How about that for a decision? Boy, they're in the right spot. Takes some talent to deliver as well. And that kind of put the pin in the balloon. Mm -hmm. Had that three fallen, this uh, Miami crowd would have gone crazy. And you were just saying the, you know, the numbers, the threes, they really start foul there. <laughs> Pretty good blow by. No basket. Like it, just unable to control. Kenny Kaji's coming back on the floor. Brian Brown will take his place. And a short bench, too. And that's really been a yes. problem for Jim, you know, without the big guy. Reggie, Reggie Johnson, Johnson who's back in Miami with a uh, knee injury. 
Great denial here. Look at this switch. Look at the footwork. And they got a cover. Only oh, here. And Wilson did. Yeah, Duran Scott did not make a good pass. So now the clock a real factor in this game with 6.42 to go. Once again, in the right spots, Barnett is really good coaching. Uh, they get a couple, get them spotted correctly. Good decision. And one. Larkin is fouled. He'll shoot two. Follow the games anywhere you go with NCAA March Madness Live. Download the app for your iPhone, iPad, or select Android devices by visiting NCAA.com slash March Madness. Larkin at the line, graduated from high school in Orlando where his mom and dad moved some time ago. He was recruited by George Mason and Jim Laranega, but opted uh, to not accept a scholarship when it was offered. It went to somebody else. He wound up at DePaul, but then he decided that he would rather be close to home. And when Laranega became the coach at Miami, Shane Larkin called Jim Laranega three days before school began mm -hmm. and said, do you have a scholarship? And Jim said, if you can get released from DePaul, and I think Oliver Purnell, the coach there, understood. Had to, yep. And uh, that's how Shane Larkin wound up at Gardner with a putback. Well, that was a message by Wilson. He was going to have a resounding thud. And again, Gardner covered a lot of ground on the big fella. Duran Scott out of the box. Mentioned Larkin, he ends up first team All ACC MVP in the tournament, and again the inability to make those threes. Yep. Nice Offensive steal. board. Larkin's got the steal. Got to keep this kid in front of you. And solid. Can do good. Ryan Brown. Whoa. A little globy move. <laughs> and then an air ball on a short shot. There you McKinney go. McKinney Jones. Ooh, good. They just can't get him to fall from long range. And he's stepping into that one. That's his baby. Three of 18 from three point. Back to Wilson. They don't have to be in a hurry. Under 10 now. Nearing the five-minute mark. Nice cross. Don't leave the ball. Cadogan misfires. From short range, here's Durant Scott. Spot up three. Welcome relief. And Brad almost shaking his head. 4.50 to go. 15-point difference. Points in the paint about the way they have dominated. It's been with the dribble, with the post up, with the bank, with the delivery on the jump hook. Terrific recognition and the big guy, Gardner, and as well, Ojule, so solid. They are competitive and making shots really freshens their approach. Billy Marquette with nine layups and three dunks in this game. Ooh. Just to underline your point. You're burnt. My pint. <laughs> and a foul underneath on the shot. Uh, there might be a hole in the floor there. We may, might have to repair it when he hits the deck. Good ball movement again. Wilson making good judgments. And that's how you attack pressure. Uh, that's drawn the ire of Jim Laranega. And uh, a real look of concern now. Down by 15 with 4.45 to go. Not a whole lot of areas to go for. He has not been in this position too often this year. Trey McKinney Jones back on the floor, number four. Duran Scott will head to the bench. It's been a tough night for Duran Scott. That it has. Oh. Now 
you play Marquette, they're going to take it to you. I mean, you're not going to just get away with your little easy moves and be cool and chill. Uh, they're going to just get after you, get into you, just like this. Look at the backside recovery. And Gardner gets the puppies down there. Here's Larkin. Floater. Yes. Somebody's got to pull a nice spin out. Oh, not a good look here. What a save. But how about that? What a save by Jamil Wilson. I mean, that is big time. Almost gets a layup out of it. Now, this is one, the dying quail. Nobody going to pay for this. Patsy with the anticipation, but as UB Brown used to say, no layups. Make sure <laughs> you get a piece. Uh, you don't want to wound them, but you want them to feel it. Hard foul. Yeah, good basketball play. Gardner at the line. Kid does a lot of good things. Gets that line, shoots him with confidence, 84%. How many big guys do that? Exactly. Ooh. The more you watch them practice, he can do what the little guys happen to do with foot speed and coverage and drills. Gardner, four for four at the line. He's got 12 points. He has been a real presence tonight. Ryan Brown for three. A little chuck and duck on that one. Look at the numbers again. Three on one. Larkin should have lobbed it, huh? And Blue once again. Larkin undersized, trying to protect. Back to a 19-point margin. Largest lead of the game was 21. Devontae Gardner picks up the foul. It was a cheap one. Plenty of time remaining in the second half. Back to Vern Lundquist with his side order of onions. <laughs> <laughs> well, Greg, here's what's on tap for us. Uh, Bill Raftery is a graduate of LaSalle where he played basketball. We are going to head back to the hotel when this one, the second game here is over. And we'll have an unsweetened iced tea and watch Wichita State and LaSalle. And we'll have a little pepper in our step, too, yes, as we, we get will. back there. Larkin at the line. You can almost see in that timeout, Vern, uh, down, disenchanted. Yep. Um, the Miami kids unaccustomed being in this position. But the ability, nice hustle here. Eric Swobes with a putback, and now the full court press employed. That one is kicked. But we, we talked earlier about the bench. I mean, you've got to meet their support. 26 to 7, Marquette's bench also getting into the three second lane, either with the pass or the dribble, uh, just decimating what has been considered an extraordinary defense for Miami. Here's Jameer Wilson, fires that pass to Kadugan. Look at this, are they in the right spot? Ooh. Devontae Gardner with two more. Well, that takes a lot of energy to get that big fella up. 65-46. Brown off the mark again. They've been... Yeah, they're giving fouls. That's what the complaint by Brown was earlier. Wednesday on CBS, Ted Danson stars in a shocking new CSI. Wednesday at 10, 9 Central, only CBS. Boy, some solid play by Blue all game long. But the way they guard is makes it awfully. They're just given to uh, get into that shooting situation coming down the, the stretch. But the way they guard makes them a difficult out. Just complement one another, get in the right spot, rotate. Great communication skills. Now they'll back it out. Work on the clock. As we go under the three-minute mark in the Sweet 16. Last time Marquette 
got to the round of eight it was 2003. Tom Crean was their coach. They had a wonderful season then, wound up going to the final four with Tom Crean. That was 2003 out of Minneapolis. They thumped Kentucky in the regional final in that one. Uh, I think Buzz is shocked that this has been. You know, Look at this. Look at Lockett. They never stop. That's what makes them so great. Right? And another reach around foul, Durant Scott. I, th I think Buzz has to be a, a little bit surprised. He may be able to wear that shirt next day. Well, the second game here, a couple of heavyweights, wouldn't Ooh, you say? I would. Indiana and Syracuse meeting for the first time since they met in 1987 in the national championship game. Jim Beheim and Tom Crean, the head coaches there. And at the line, Kadugan. Well, Jakiri in there now. I'm sure Reggie Johnson would have been a factor, but I don't know if it would have mattered the way Marquette is played. You know, you, you like to have all your options if you're the Miami coach, but uh, this is just in your head. Attack your psyche. Aggressive defense. Oh! Derek Wilson's on now for Cadugan for the Golden Eagles of Marquette. They continue to string it out, much like Illinois did. Add a foul underneath on Lockett. Well, let's take you back to 1987. Jim Beheim, Bob Knight, the head coaches, and with seven seconds left, Keith Smart, now the head coach at Sacramento. And he cans the jumper on the baseline. Piece of history. Yes. I, I, he was facing where I was seated. Yeah. And at that time, I thought he was below the backboard. And as the years progressed and we saw it more, he had a perfect view. Howard Trish tried to come over and block it. There's Derek Coleman on that team. Howard Trish's nephew, Brandon Trish, will be in the starting lineup for Indiana in the second game. And for Marquette, a round of eight appearance for the first time in 10 years. And one thing about Jim Beheim, who's as unpleasant then as he is now. So. <laughs> yes. The only thing that's changed, he's got a championship under his belt. <laughs> well, he won that championship in 2003, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. when Marquette was in the Final Four in New Orleans. Look at how they are prepared for the pressure. A couple of miscues to give away by what has to be a disappointed Scott. They're on Scott. That's four on Scott. Terrific defender, player of the year. And the best season in Miami basketball history is going to end with disappointment as they will get knocked out. This is a program that floundered for years. Second time in the Sweet 16, as we mentioned, the best player in Miami history. You got to go back to 1965 mm -hmm. and a guy named Rick Barry. I played against Rick. We used to play Miami every year. McCoy, Hickok, they had some really good mm -hmm. team. Bruce Hale, who was Rick Barry's father in law at the time. Well, the first father in law. And the, the Dinner Key Auditorium years later, I brought our Seton Hall team down. It was in total disarray. And to see what's happened under Jim Laranega is. Just mind-boggling, and uh, they're keepers. This program will be good for a long time with him at the helm. Nice uh, ball rotation, and from the corner, Trey McKinney Jones gets another three, but they've been too few tonight. And by the way, I held Barry to 40, and then I fell down. <laughs> <laughs> and he went underhanded with the free throw. Well, he made every right? one of them too. Yeah. You notice they just played both teams too. No nonsense, no woofing, right? Just getting after it. Five second violation. And another reminder, of course, the tournament seen on uh, four outlets initially. And uh, a close game going on over on TBS right now between Arizona and Ohio State. This one is going to go in the books as a Marquette victory. 
This is a, a Miami program. Actually, they didn't have a basketball program from 71 to 86. There's a three from Duran Scott. I was talking to Joe Zagaki, who is, uh, has been the play-by-play -play man in Miami for 23 years. They were cost-cutting in 1971, and it came down to a choice to keep their baseball program or their basketball program. And baseball won. Well, Ron, I think Ron Fraser was the coach. A great program in those days. Well, with 111 to go in this game, we've reached consensus here among us all. And we have advanced Marquette. Mm -hmm. And uh, Miami's season is going to come to an end. And this Marquette team with the three seed knocks out a two seed. This is the only region, by the way, in which form held. And we had one, two, three, and four getting to the Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. Jim Laranega, 63 years of age, his wife Liz. Two sons, one of whom is on Doc Rivers' mm -hmm. staff Jay, at the Jay, Boston think, right? Celtics, right? Doc, of course, a graduate of Marquette. At home tonight with the Celtics hosting Atlanta tomorrow night, and I'm guessing that Doc is watching this one. Oh, I'm sure it'd with be very, pleasure. very happy. Nice. But way too little, way too late. Well, it set the tone, them missing the shots early. Don't yeah. you think, uh, again, they were rushed and challenged and run off the three-point line, made to put it on the deck, came up short. Uh, so the defensive scheme had a lot to do with it, but they were not relaxed. For some reason, uh, the tightness they exhibited has cost them dearly. The Cadogan goes to the line. You think Al is smiling? Oh, yeah. Huh? Al McGuire, of course, they won their national championship in 1977. A memorable scene of the late Al McGuire in tears at the end of the bench. And he announced his intention to retire. I know you were good friends. I had the thrill of working with Al as my partner in 1999 before somebody wised up to put you and me together. <laughs> well, <laughs> we should let other people go. Yeah, you're cool. right. You're absolutely right. But I know you worked with him. Uh, he loved the game. He loved the kids in the game. And they loved the city of Milwaukee and his university. He's really awfully proud of what Tom Green first did. And Buzz, unknown, unheralded, his work habits uh, chronicled. Uh, just an extraordinary leader for this program. Scott fouls out. Really tough night. He's the defensive player of the year in the ACC. Offensively this evening, 3 of 13 for 10 points. And he is a senior. This is a senior-laden Miami team. With Larkin coming back next year, we assume. Uh, And one scholarship freshman, Tonye Jakiri, on the on the roster. How about this guy's game? Oh, really tough. A couple of assists, seven rebounds, for 15 or 16 points. Good. To Bill Wilson, the real deal. Larkin, one of the few looks. Yep, and that's what he can do. Timeout called by Miami at 71-59. Marquette team has dreams of a national title. Let's take you back to 77. The handshake with Dean Smith, North Carolina, Al McGuire, the layup. Allie, his son, one of the stars on that team. The tears from one of the most beloved figures, I think, in the history of basketball, the late Al McGuire. I would agree. He's something special. We'll light up a room. We light it up when we leave. Some guy. I, I know you always have something left in your holster. <laughs> no, Final 26 seconds. There is a five-second difference. Shot clock, game clock. Well, terrible shooting in the first half by Miami. They scored only 16 points at the half and were down by 13. Played much better in this half, but they just could not get out of this huge hole. And uh, given the score, that's a good note. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, uh, I just think with Blue handling the ball, he really compliments the guards the way he can bounce and keep it alive. That should do it. One second to go. 
And uh, it's going to look good on the stat sheet, only a 10-point loss. But what a tough, tough night it was for Larinaga and Miami, and what a wonderful game played by the Golden Eagles. The final score, Marquette 71, Miami 61. Turn to TBS now for Arizona, Ohio State. Coming up on CBS, Syracuse, Indiana. We'll send you to our studio after these messages. Game. Meanwhile, just a short while ago, off their 10-point win, Rachel Nichols with some victorious Marquette Golden Eagles. Here with Vander Blue, the victorious Sweet 16 winner. You haven't been able to say that in your three tries here, but now that you can, what does it feel like? It's amazing, man. Just, just thinking about everything I've been through, everything our team's been through, it's, it's just a God's gift. Uh, it goes back to what we did before the season started, just always believing in ourselves and just watch what everybody else does. Everybody says we wouldn't be any good. Everybody says this team wasn't any good, didn't have a leader. I wasn't any good. And we just keep we just keep going about it every single day. Uh, we can celebrate this now, but we still we want to win the next one. Well, nobody is saying that anymore. And uh, Coach Vander was talking about winning the next one. You spent so much energy saying we've got to get over that Sweet 16 hump and this your third try. How do you then get them refocused on the Elite Eight? I thought the preparation by our guys, I thought their concentration, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, outstanding. We're thankful. And as you go into that next game, you told me that this time you guys were not just excited to be there. How do you make sure you're not just excited to be there when you guys go on Saturday? I'll just celebrate this one today and get back to work tomorrow. Start watching film on whoever wins this next game and start mentally getting prepared now because everybody's good now. At this point of the year, just who wants it more. So we're going to come out with a lot of hunger and aggression like we did today, and that should be enough. Well, you guys will face Syracuse or Indiana, so yes, everybody is good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Back to you. Rachel, thank you.